everyone, welcome to our next art lesson. This one is called Greek Olympics and Art. It is an art history appreciation lesson. The materials you are going to need are a ruler, a pencil, an eraser. You're gonna need your piece of binder paper that was given out with materials and a piece of um, warm up paper, scratch paper. Uh, it's the size of uh, your binder paper, okay? The other materials that you're gonna need for the next video are gonna be the red piece of paper, large piece of construction paper, and then the smaller pieces of black construction. But for now, these are the materials right here that you're gonna need. So, to get started, well, obviously press the pause button, go get your materials, and come on back and press play. But to get started, I'm going to remind you how to keep a positive mindset. Uh, always try your best. That's all I'm looking for is just your best effort, not perfection, your best effort. If you get frustrated, take a deep breath, take a break if you need to, count to 10, do some push-ups, some sit-ups, jumping jacks, whatever you need to do to burn it out. Take another deep breath and come back, persevere, try again. Uh, next thing to keep in mind is that your artwork is gonna be different than everyone else's because all artwork is uniquely different no matter how many times we try um, to even copy someone's or even our own artwork. It's always gonna turn out differently. And lastly, art is not perfect. You ready to have fun time, Joe? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's Joey. Hey, Joe. Hi. And here is his, um, his uh, what do you call it? Um, workstation. workstation. Yeah. Well, the last thing I forgot, I forgot to tell you to get your drawing aids out. So see how Joe has those drawing aids? So I'm gonna show them to you. Grab these, your Olympian, uh, athletes right here front back for that one front back for that one and these are some borders right here where you need front okay grab those it's six or excuse me five pages total of art um, drawing needs all right so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a brief history right now while I put up some images so I'm gonna talk to you about the Greek Olympics okay so the Greek Olympics date back to almost, I don't know, well over 2,000 years ago. So 776 BC, when a cook won a race that was approximately 200 yards in Olympia. In the beginning, the festival was local and only the nearest villages participated, but the games expanded and um, they became very, very famous and a symbol of glory in all of Greece. So thousands of Greeks would go to the Olympics once every four years to watch, watch the athletes. Today, we still hold our Olympics every four years, although it's actually technically every two years because we separate our Olympics. We do winter sports and then we do summer sports. So every four years you do winter sports and every four years you do summer sports, but you alternate them so it actually ends up being every two years. Um, so back then it was every four years. Mm -hmm. And um, if you were able to attend the Olympics, it was a huge status symbol. Wait, is a World Cup part of the Olympics? Because isn't that every four years? That is every four years, but it is not part of the Olympics. It's a different tournament. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was kind of like a, a carnival atmosphere when you would go to the Greek Olympics back in the day. Uh, there were booths and tents everywhere, performing acrobats, magicians. Uh, it was a real big show. Um, the stadium was surrounded by grassy slopes with seating for more than um, 40,000 men. Guess who were not allowed to go? Where? Women were not allowed to go. In fact, if a woman even attempted to sneak in, mm -hmm. guess what her punishment was? Kill? Uh, yeah, she could be killed for it. Yeah, it was against the law. They were uh, thrown from a cliff, it says in my notes, if they broke this law. Um, so, uh, let's see, looking at my notes here, I have that um, the very first Olympic competition was a race. It was a 200 yard race, which is the length of the state of a stadium. And that was called a one stayed race. Then came the double stayed race that was added later, four years later. And then came the distance race, which <laughs> was the equivalent of about three miles long. Ooh. And then as the years ticked on and the Olympics kept going, they added wrestling, chariot races, boxing, races in armor. Um, 
they had uh, like the discus and the javelin and the, the broad jump. Um, they added wrestling and um, a combination of wrestling and boxing together, which was called pink ration. And the thing about pink ration was that there were no rules. And the only way it ended was if one of the one of the two that were fighting conceded and said, "I give up." Okay, <laughs> so it's really hard. It's hard to concede, right? There wasn't like a judge saying, "Hey, this person won." Uh, so that was the way that that event ended. Uh, so what ended up happening is, as the Olympics kind of evolved over time, the champions became big heroes, and um, uh, you know, competitors would come from all over, and those who would win were really uh, rewarded greatly. Um, what? Hunger Games. Hunger Games? It's like Hunger Games. It's like Hunger Games. Well, yeah, but it wasn't to the death. <laughs> yeah, so, for victory. So. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's you know they they were celebrated greatly. So for ten months, athletes would train at home. Then for one month. They would train with judges, and then those judges would select the best the best athletes from that group and take them to the Olympics. Uh, the winners would receive an olive wreath, and they would became become great heroes in their homes, often getting free houses built for them and free meals for the rest of their life. So those are some rewards for becoming a champion of an Olympic event. So it was a great honor. Uh, if you won three championships. Uh, you would have a statue sculpted of you to commemorate your championship, and that would be displayed in like your hometown and perhaps maybe in Olympia. Um, okay. Let's see what else is in my notes. Um, so, in history, you're going to find, and you can see these in museums around the world who have uh, um, pottery from this time, you're going to see the Olympic Games being um, represented on the pottery. Okay, so um, it was very common. Joey. Joey's doing something that I cannot stand. He's putting his pencil into his eraser and damaging it. Stop. <laughs> I know all of you kids do this. It drives me crazy. All four of my kids do it. Um, okay, so the pottery would show um, the games that the that the Olympians would play. Also, you, you're going to find pottery back in this time that would show the Olympian Greek gods, weddings, funerals. But a really big, big um, display would be the events from the Olympics. So um, the jugs that they created were for holding wine and water. They also would create bowls and... Um, and many other, uh, you know, in this shape that were not only decorative, but used to, you know, carry things and to uh, drink from, okay? Or pour to drink from. Okay, so what, what you're going to see here, I'm going to show you a bunch of images. A lot of the time, the, um, the background, it was like a, a yellow, uh, an orangish red with the image being black on top. Okay, so you'll see here the image of this athlete is all black and it's just the contour. You don't see any details within. And then up above, oftentimes there were borders that they would create and down below there were borders that they would create. And if you see here, this is the symbol, the Olympic symbol of the five rings intersecting. So that dates back to all the way, you know, seven, you know, BC, like over 2000 years ago. So that symbol has been around for a long time. Okay, so what we are going to do is, I'm going to show you some. So this is, this is an image of a race. Uh, this, what is this called when you throw the disc? Is it discus or, I is that right? I think so. so yeah. Sorry, this one right here looks like they're, they're wrestling or they're like boxing. So it looks like that's the, the, the combination of the wrestling and boxing. Um, here, um, I'm not really sure what they're doing. It looks like they're kind of dancing. Here they're running, running, more running, and here it looks like um, they're doing stuff with weapons, okay? So we're going to be emulating this with paper. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our drawing aids. I have mine. Joey has his. I think I have mine. 
Yes, I have mine. Joey, grab yours. And we're gonna start with contour drawing. And you're gonna pick. So Joe, what do you think that you would rather do? Would you rather do like multiple figures running a race? Like this one right here. Would you rather do a single person running a race? Would you rather do um, someone, it looks like this is like maybe a track and field event right here. Um, here, the, this is um, maybe, um, what is that, a javelin where you throw that? I thought that was that thing where you like you put it on the ground and then it, this was a guy, you put it on the ground and it goes like high. Oh yeah, so you run, you stick the pole in the, in the earth and then you can high jump over something. Um, okay, so Joey, what do you think you want to do? Do you want to do, do a person running? You want to do a person running? Um, so, uh, you we can do either um, multiple people or one person at a time. I think we should start with one. So, you are going to grab your warm up paper, and we're gonna do contour drawing right now. So I'm gonna wait for Joey. Okay. And Joey said he's gonna do a person running. So do you wanna do this, one of these guys right here? Yeah. Or there's this guy, which looks pretty similar. What do you What do you think you're gonna use? I should do one of them. Okay, you tell me which one you're gonna pick. That one? Okay, so I want you to choose. You don't have to do what Joey and I are doing. You guys can go ahead and do whatever it is that you choose to do. So Joey said he's gonna do this guy right here. So contour drawing is when you just draw the the uh, lines that make the um, the contour of the person, which is the the outer edge of the person. We're not going to do any details within the body. Okay, so I'm going to start with the head, and you know what? Actually, let's fold our paper in half in case we want to do a couple, try a couple different ones. Okay, so we're going to start with the head, and I'm just going to follow with my eyes with my pencil. So I'm going to do his hair right here. I'm gonna come down his neck, do the top of his hair right here, his nose, come down, do his lips, and come in for his chin, and do his neck. So I just did the contour drawing of his head. Then I'm gonna come down here, he has a pretty muscular shoulder, into an arm, this is his bicep, to his elbow, and then his forearm coming down. Then I'm gonna do the other side of the arm here, bringing it into the elbow, coming down, and then I can do his five fingers. One, two, three, four, five. And then I can come down his back and come around his bottom. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of the shoulder. I'm gonna come up here. And so I, the way I like to contour draw, draw is I like to work myself all the way down, working on one side at a time and flipping back and forth. So here's the bicep right here coming down the elbow, the forearm, and my eyes are just moving back and forth, back and forth between my drawing aid and my paper that I'm drawing on. One, two, three, four, five fingers. I'm gonna come down to his chest here, to his waist, kick his knee out. And I'm just doing the contour line draws here. And if you need to erase at any time, go ahead. We are just practicing here. We're not going for perfection. We're just really using the skill of our eyes bouncing back and forth. My eyes are going from here to here, back again, back again, back again, back again, as my pencil's moving. It helps for me to talk it out. I'm coming down the calf to the foot, the heel right there. And I'm gonna come here to the thigh, to the knee, and the shin. Bring his foot down, and he is in motion running. So he's coming, he's springing off of his, um, the, what do you call that part of your foot? What do you call this part of your foot right here, Joe? What? This right here. I'm at a loss of that word. Your toe? Uh, your toes and then the pad of your foot, the bottom of your foot. Oh, your heel? No, this is the heel back here. I'm losing, I, I've lost this word out of my brain today. Okay, that's all right. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to do the the thigh meets the, the knee and come on down here for the um, the calf and the, and the shin meet up here to form the foot that's running in the air. Okay, 
So here is my contour drawing of my runner. That's okay. I'm going to show him yours because we can always use our eraser. So Joey's head is a little bit on the big side, which is fine. But if, if we were, once we do this on our black piece of paper, we're going to be a little bit more conscientious about proportion, the head being proportionate to the body. Uh, your lower body is uh, very proportionate to each other, your arms are proportionate to each other, and then your head's extra large. So you're going to try again, we're going to contour draw again, flip it over to the back, and why don't we fold it this time, I'm going to fold Joey's paper, and we're going to try it again, okay? You can either try to do your runner again, if that's what you think you're going to do on your, on, your, um, on your final paper, or you can pick another athlete to do. Okay, so I'm gonna pick another athlete for the benefit of anybody else who might wanna be doing a different athlete. I'm gonna fold my paper over and I'm gonna do the discus throw guy right here. All right, I'm gonna start with his head and he's bent over. So I'm gonna start with the back of his head like this. Contour drawing, my eyes are going back and forth, back and forth. There's his nose. Okay, and there's the back of his head. His head is leaning forward. And there's his neck, and there's his shoulder, bicep to his elbow. I'm gonna come out like that, and there's the rest of his arm. And then the, the disc that he's throwing here, that's in his hand. You can't see his hand because we're just doing the contour drawing. His hand would be right here. All right, and remember, only men were able to compete in this and view it. That would not fly today, huh? No comment, Joe? No. Okay, so here's my discus thrower. I'm really trying my best here. Here's the, el the shoulder coming out here. Oops. And here we go. Erase when you need to, pause the video when you need to, take your time, go at your own pace. Everyone's just doing their best. Here is the inside of the arm and the chest area and the abdominal area to the legs. I'm, I am, as I'm doing this, I'm not a, a big fan of my ability to do the discus, the discus throwing guy. And he rests his hand, his hand right there. And then the leg comes out this way, the calf. And then the foot. And there's my shin coming up. And then the other leg coming down. He looks like Peter Pan. Looks like Peter Pan. Uh, shoot. Here's Joey's next attempt. So Joey, you gotta really get into the curves of the body. <laughs> hey, positive self-talk. It's okay for it not to look the way you want it to in the very beginning. That's why you keep practicing. Look right here, Joey. You got to get some curvature in the body to give the muscles. So you got to get more muscular in the body and you can get it longer. And here, look, here's the calf. Here's the thigh coming in to the knee and then the calf coming out. Mm -hmm. So try it again. Try it again. It's all right. It's okay not to be good at it the first couple times. However many times you need to practice it, go for it. If you need another piece of paper to practice on. Okay. Here is my discus thrower. And I am realizing that that is definitely not one that I'm gonna be doing. I am feeling pretty okay about my runner right here. So I think I might be focusing on this guy, but I should try some other one. Okay, by the way, side note, when we're doing this on our large piece of paper with black paper, if you decide to do a bunch of uh, men running, you're going to do them all separately and you're going to overlap them. So you're going to draw this one first, this one, this one, and this one, and then we're going to cut them out and then you're going to overlap them onto your red paper. Okay. So it's going to look, you'll get this effect here, like runners running together or something like, or what's the one that was over a lot of them here. You got a bunch of runners running together. So we're just practicing right now. Um, so I've done a runner. I did, this guy right here, I can do, I could do this one with the, with the pole. I could try these two guys who look like they're going to be wrestling. 
I'd want to do one, the one on the, the left first, and then the one on the right next. I could do one after the other, but I think I'm going to go for this one. Okay, so I have the head here, and then the shoulder coming out. And then I have the nose and the face here. Ooh. The nose, the lips, the chin coming down. And then here's his arm stretching down. And then I can give him his hand holding it. Coming up. And his body. Make sure you're doing the, the muscles and the curves of the muscles. Here is his torso area, and then his thigh to his knee, over here, keep it coming. All right, so there's the foot coming out, then I can have his knee bending in this direction. I'm just, my eyes are bouncing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then there is his other leg coming this way and then I'm going to do the pole last so here's the pole coming through and coming out this way maybe like that so here's the pole oops I didn't even I didn't have that very very um didn't have that in the, the screen very well sorry so I've done three I'd like you guys to just practice however many you want to practice. If you want to practice the same one again for your fourth one, if you want to get another piece of um, paper and practice, you can practice for a couple days until we come back for the next video. Um, the last thing we're going to do before we end this video is grab your binder paper and then you are going to Take your drawing aid that has all of the borders. Where is that? This one. So you're going to take your drawing aid with all your borders. You're going to take your ruler and you're just going to be practicing. See how they made borders up top and borders down below? We're just going to be practicing some of them. I'm going to put this on Google Doc. I'm going to have your teacher put this on Google Doc. So, we can take our binder paper. If you want to use your ruler now, you can, or you can eye this. We're going to use the ruler when we do it on our actual, um, on our actual project. But for just the sake of practicing drawing it, we can just do all of these different borders and try them. So up and use, use your, the lines of your binder paper. I went up two, over, down one, in, and I'm just gonna do that pattern repeating. We will not have border paper, obviously, on our actual uh, red paper. We're not gonna glue binder paper onto it. So this is to get you to practice spacing and straight line, using straight lines, creating patterns, the same thing over and over. Okay, we can do this one right here. I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use three. I'm gonna go up three, one, two, three. Over, I'm gonna come down two, come in, up one, over, and I'm just following this pattern right here. I'm gonna do that again. And I'm just gonna keep that pattern going all the way across my paper. You have your drawing aid to do it, and as much time as you need. Oh, that was a skinny one. It's okay, I'm just, I, I'm working on my spacing. When we do this on our actual art piece, we're gonna do it lightly with pencil first, so that we'll have the ability to erase if we want to, and then we'll trace it with Sharpie. This one's an interesting one. I'm gonna use three lines as well. because This comes up, over, and down. And then it comes like this and out. 
and I'm just following it with my eyes. And going all the way across the paper doing the same pattern. All right, Jerry's being silly. All right. Last one over here for me, and then we're gonna do a more simple one. These are all straight lines. This one has more of a curved line. So I'm gonna just gonna use, I'm gonna use um, three, three lines here too. I'm gonna come up and curve around. And I'm just gonna follow this exact same pattern all the way around. Practicing, practicing, practicing. If you want to come back and do this video twice because of the technicality of all this, please do. It doesn't hurt to practice because in the end, when we do our actual art piece, we are gonna want to feel confident, okay? Here's another fun one. This is just um, a wave going up and down. And then you have some, it looks like olive leaves possibly coming out. Oh, they're kind of in the shape of a heart. So you could do that. Okay, so feel free to continue that pattern. You can do this U-shape pattern where you just do a bunch of U's, like they're, they're like concentric U's. You can do concentric U's all the way around. If you wanna go on Google and look up other type of patterns that were common on um, Olympian, pottery you can do that and you can practice those um, here's a wave here's another interesting one here so just keep going um, these are all on here too okay so use your drawing aid practice as much as you want and then I'd like you to make up a few yourself so once you're done with this you I'd like you to keep all your warm-up papers so you're gonna keep your binder paper you're gonna keep your um, white piece of paper here. You're going to keep your drawing aids. And when you come back for video number two, you're going to bring it all with you along with your red and black paper. So Joey and I will see you for video number two after you are confident with your practicing and you are ready to make your um, official artwork. Bye. <laughs> Joey's saying bye. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next time.